Hello everyone, Claudia here, leader teacher of the school All You Can Learn Arese, and this is a new episode of our Literature Snacks. Now, today we're going again into the Gothic world after Frankenstein that we did almost one year ago. Today we're working on a Gothic novel from Charlotte Bronte, Jane Eyre. Charlotte Bronte was born in 1816, Yorkshire, England. Her mother died when she was five, and at the end of eight, she was sent to a school for a clergyman's daughters, along with her three sisters. Now, fortunately, tuberculosis killed two of her sisters, and Charlotte, Emily and Emily were brought home. She returned to school several years later and became a teacher. In 1835, she decided to become a governess. So she lived with and tutored the children of a very wealthy family, but not finding the experience too uh, funny or interesting, she left the home very soon, as her real dream was to open a school of her own. So she recruited her sister for help. The project of the school wasn't exactly successful, but the literary project actually flourished. Emily Anne and Charlotte Bronte started publishing books under a male pseudonym. Once her book Jane Eyre becomes one of the most successful novels of the time, she revealed her real identity to the publisher. But unfortunately, the death of her siblings, Emily and Anne, left her in a complete wreckage of emotions. So she ended up marrying a reverend that she didn't love and died of pneumonia while she was pregnant at the age of 38. The protagonist of the book is Jane Eyre, as she is an orphan raised by her cruel and wealthy aunt, Mrs. Reed. She is bullied by her cousin and mistreated by her aunt. Her only kindness that she receives is from a servant, Bessie. When the apothecary suggested that Jane should be sent to school, Jane is sent to Lowood School, an institute founded by Mr. Brokenhurst. Now, Mr. Brokenhurst is a wealthy man who preaches a doctrine of poverty and privation. He uses the school funds to provide an opulent and wealthy lifestyle to his family and leaves the student of the school in a situation of cold, hunger and misery. A typhus epidemic strikes Lowood and kills the only friend that Jane had, Ellen Burns. But on the other hand, the terrible situation of the school attracts the attention of more sympathetic group of gentlemen who remove Mr. Brockenhurst from his office and the school becomes a good environment for Jane. She will spend six more years in the school as a student and two more as a teacher. After teaching for two years, Jane, looking for new experiences, accepts a governess position at the manor called Thornfield. There, she teaches a French girl named Adèle, the protégé of Mr. Rochester, who is a dark and impassionate man with whom Jane secretly falls in love. One night, Jane saves Mr. Rochester from a fire, which he claims was set up by a drunk servant, Grace Fool, who unexpectedly keeps working at the manor. So Jane starts suspecting that she's not told the whole story. When Mr. Rochester brings home a beautiful but mean woman named Blanche Ingram, she expects uh, Mr. Rochester to propose to her, but unexpectedly, Mr. Rochester proposes to Jane. She accepts immediately, but on the wedding day in the church, a man called Mr. Mason interrupts the ceremony and cries that Mr. Rochester already has a wife. Now, at this point, Mr. Rochester confesses to be married to Mr. Mason's sister, Bertha, whom he married in Jamaica, a Spanish city, when he was young, but he also claimed that Bertha has gone mad. He takes the whole wedding guest party to Thornfield, where Bertha is confined in the attic, scaring all over four and growling like a wild animal. 
Bertha was actually the cause of the fire the night that Jane saved Mr. Rochester and the cause of the creepy laughter Jane heard now and then at the house. Grace Poole is the servant that Mr. Rochester pays to take care of Bertha. As a result, Jane flees Thornfield. After a short period that she passes begging in the street, begging for food and shelter, Jane is taken in the care of three siblings, uh, the Rivers, a man and two women. One is a clergyman, St. Jane, who finds Jane a job in a charity school in Morton. The news of the death of Jane's uncle arrives along with a fortune that Jane shares with the Rivers sibling as she finds out that they are all cousins. When Sin Jin asks her to marry him and to move to India with him as a missionary, Jane realizes that she can't deny the love that she has for Mr. Rochester. So she goes back to Thornfield, where she discovers that Bertha has burned the house down, losing her life in the fire. But Mr. Rochester has saved all the servants and he is still alive, though he is blind and he's lost one of his hands. Jane travels to the new residency of Mr. Rochester and they rebuild their relationship there. The book ends with Jane recounting that they have been married for 10 blissful years and after two of them, Mr. Rochester regained the sight of one eye, hence he was able to see their son. Throughout the whole book, Jane is in constant fight with the patriarchy that deeply characterized England in the 19th century. Jane Austen's Prize and Prejudice has not to be confounded with Jane Eyre, as this book has a light and witty tone that Jane Eyre lacks, as Jane Eyre's tone is dark with gothic element. Elizabeth from Pride and Prejudice is upper class, beautiful and outspoken, so she is socially inappropriate. Jane Eyre is poor, orphan, and she speaks her mind with a decorum unusual for her status. She is socially awkward. All the three most important male characters in the books are misogynist at different levels. They all try to keep Jane in a submissive position. Mr. Brokenhurst punishes Jane by humiliating her, making her standing on a chair with the whole, for the whole day with the sign liar and tries to alienate her from her schoolmates. Now, not only Jane is able to endure the punishment, but thanks to Miss Temple, the, lead, the leader teacher of the school at Lowood, she gets her reputation restored and she never acknowledges any power of Mr. Brockenhurst over her. Mr. Rochester behaves inappropriately with Jane, whom is just a governess, and never holds a thought back. His contempt for Jane's youth and inexperience of life is blatant. Every time he speaks to her, Mr. Rochester bends over Jane more as if she was a relief from the monotony of high society. Now, Jane will marry him only when she can be his equal. She does not depend on him as she is financially independent and she had her life experience at the Moore house. Sin Jin. Although he gives Jane food and shelter when she ran away from Thornfield, he is cold and alienated from emotion. He is what in literature we call a foil to Mr. Rochester. A foil is an element that is completely the contrary of Mr. Rochester. So Mr. Rochester is passionate and Sin Jin is controlled and alienated from his emotion. When Sin Jin offers to Jane to marry him and follow him in India as a missionary, he knows that she doesn't love him. But he underlines how this, the marrying him, would elevate Jane to a meaningful contribution to the society. Marrying Sin Jin would be the symbol of marriage without love and passion. It is 
Through his proposal, the Jain acknowledges that part of one's independence and freedom is found in a relationship with mutual love and passion. So by marrying Mr. Rochester and not marrying St. Jean, Jane chose passion and sexuality. Two feelings that were completely denied to women in marriage but also in life in general. So, the institution of marriage in the book is presented as a tool to master and control women. Completely different from Pride and Prejudice from Jane Austen, where marriage is the only way to save Elizabeth family. So, the two characters cannot be confounded. Birth of Mason can be seen as the symbol of how women can go crazy, trapped in a marriage where they are oppressed and controlled. Nevertheless, at the end of the book, uh, the, the institution of marriage is restored as um, Jane marries Mr. Rochester in a situation where they are equal, love each other, and they actually live a happy life. The most important gothic element that we can see in Jane Eyre is the supernatural. Now, differently from Wuthering Heights, uh, from Charlotte's sister, uh, the effect of supernatural in Jane Eyre matters more than the causes, as Charlotte uses supernatural to explore Jane's psyche, as it is in the Red Room at the very beginning, where Jane feels the ghost of Uncle Reed tormented for his unfulfilled promise to keep Jane accepted. This is in reality Jane expressing alienation and desire of acceptance in a house where she was never welcomed. Another gothic element that we can see in the book is the storm that split the chestnut tree where Jane and Mr. Rochester kiss for the first time. This creates an atmosphere where nature itself doubts with Jane on the nature of her future wedding, where she feels uh, that she cannot find herself free, but she may feel trapped and oppressed. Bertha Mason has been identified as a gothic element in reality, she has been identified as the double of Jane. She, Bertha, is the demon of Thornfield, but she is also the manifestation of anger and violent passions that Jane has at the very beginning of the book, when she reacts to her cousin bullying her. The connection between Jane and Bertha highlights the uncertainty that surrounds Jane around her upcoming marriage. Another gothic element is the mysterious mental connection that Jane has with Mr. Rochester at the end of the book, that Bronte uses again to reinforce the love that Jane has for Mr. Rochester. And it's precisely this connection that will have Jane making the decision to go back at Thornfield. The book Jane Eyre inserts itself in the collection of books about women try to fight patriarchy. It was the first time ever that a woman was portrayed as feeling as a man, capable of passion and strong will to fight against the odd and even beg in poverty instead of staying at Thorfield. Bronte faced several accusations of obscenity and immorality for this novel, but it led to a kind of character that is still explored nowadays, where we see gothic elements of fiction, where we have a very young and maybe inexperienced girl choosing to discover her own love and sexuality. We can say this in the recent movie Crimson Peak, but we can also see that in the new movie of Mary Shelley's life, Mary Shelley, where she chooses to elope with the person Mr. Shelley and leave a house full of possibility and wealth. Jane Eyre inserts itself in the uh, category of feminist novels 
along with Jane Austen books that are deeply different from Charlotte Bronte, as we see, because one is gothic and the other ones have a completely lighter tone. And obviously, in Jane Eyre, it is more uh, possible to see uh, the autobiographical elements and uh, how exactly uh, Jane felt uh, about uh, patriarchy oppressing women. Uh, we can consider Jane Eyre as one of the most modern novels of uh, English literature, as there aren't many uh, similar as uh, it, uh, over through all through English literature. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please, if you like this video, give us a thumb up. If you want more gothic novels or if you want to explore anything else, if you want more literature snacks, please comment below. Remember that if you, you can always subscribe to our channel. This is our email address where you can request English, French, Spanish, Italian for foreigners and German private courses we teach adults and teenagers in present and online. This is our Facebook page, this is our Instagram page, please follow us and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye!